top five things you need to do to get rid of your PTHD. And to be clear, PTHD means your post-traumatic hood disorder. If you grew up in the hood, you grew up experiencing trauma. It just wasn't diagnosed as trauma. It was just passed off as normal life because of the demographics in which you live that some people call the hood, others call the ghetto, others call the urban areas. Okay? But it's all the hood. So, those things are trauma and it affects your entire life. Now, what do you do to get rid of it? That's the solution based here. What do you do to get rid of your PTHD? Whatever it is and however it affects you, how do I rid myself of this PTHD? I'm going to give you the top five ideas that help me. Hopefully they will help you to get rid of your PTHD. Number one, first and foremost, decide that you want more than what you grew up seeing, what you saw in your environment, all of the above. Just decide, number one, that you want to be different. And you're okay with being different. You're okay with being a black sheep. You're okay with being Sharif and sitting on that cooler where all the 40 ounces are chilling. You gotta be okay. And you gotta decide that you want different for you despite whatever people call you and all of that. You have to decide. Make a decision. Make a decision. As Denzel once said, make a decision. <laughs> Number two. After you have made a decision, you need to first and foremost get the proper help. You need to get help. You need to seek someone psychologically that can help you to massage the ideas that are planted in your brain to come out of your brain. This could be a spiritual person or a therapist that's really good. And I put the emphasis on a therapist that's really good because a lot of them don't understand what you're dealing with. But trauma is trauma. Trauma comes in all shapes, forms, and sizes. We just have to figure out what your trauma is, how growing up in that environment has affected you. Sometimes it affects you in your relationship with your with spouses. It affects you in relationships with family. It affects you in the job or making money. It affects the kids, the children that you're raising, if you have them. It affects you in how you just overall view life sometimes for some people. But however it affects you, you need to go identify that and get help with that process because it's a very difficult process to let go. Once that trauma has scarred your mind, it's hard to let it go. You want to normalize it. You want to find other things just like it. Misery loves company, as my mother always said. But when you decide not to live in misery, you're going to be on an island all alone. You're going to need some help. So I would say definitely find a coach, a spiritual coach, a therapist, or someone you can talk to that has some type of finger on the pulse of what you're dealing with. Because you're going to need it. Number three is to basically, and this is going to sound harsh, but it's a necessary tool. You're going to have to go cold turkey with cutting certain people off that are still in that mindset, that are still living that life. Let me ask you a question. If you were an alcoholic and you went to AA class, I think they tell you it's a good idea for you not to to be in a space where too much alcohol is being served. Why? Because you might relapse and want to drink and take a drink. And then fall right back into your alcoholism. So it's the same thing 
with PTSD. Any trauma you suffer, you might want to remove yourself from that environment until your mind is strong enough to resist it. So you need to remove yourself from the circles that you once associated with. Is it permanent? No. But when you feel better and you feel like you're doing better, then you can stop by and go and say hello. But you can't sit within it and waddle in it and then think you're going to change. That's not going to be a good outlook for you. If you are really decided, you have to decide wholeheartedly and completely. You can't go at it halfway. So, yes, please, please remove yourself from that circle. They're going to think you're bougie and you think you're better than us. Again, as we said in the first one, you can't worry about what other people have to say. This is your decision. You want to do better for you. You have to be willing to take a bullet for your choices. So there are going to be some thoughts your way. They're going to think you're trying to leave them or be better than them, but that's okay. That's because they're scarred and misery loves company, as we already said. You'll get through it. Trust me. Number four. I always associate growth and change by clearing out the brain. You have to clear the fog from your mind. You have the trauma scars in there, but now you have the fog in there. And that fog is associated with the trauma, trust me. But it's also associated with the diet you develop by living in the hood. See, what you eat controls to a degree how you think, how you process things. If you ever ate a heavy Thanksgiving meal with all the fixings and you get what they call the itis, you're going to sleep whether you don't you want to or not. <laughs> it's going to put you to sleep. It's going to make you sluggish. It's going to slow down the way that your brain fires neurons because it's too much to process at that time. And when you eat so much negative food, you are slowing down your neurons. You're not as sharp as someone that's not on that death plate. That's a deadly plate when you're eating wrong. It's killing your brain cells. It's almost like drugs. It's just a dopamine that you're looking for each time you eat food. So my suggestion to you would to be do a full body cleanse. I'm not talking about some olive oil cleanse you have for three days, five, seven days. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a full body cleanse that addresses every aspect of your body, all of your major organs, your blood, your lymphatic system, your heart, your liver, your colon, all of those things. You need to flush those things. Okay? Because stress, trauma, and food is a brewing, it's an incubator for diseases. Okay? That's an incubator for diseases. So please, by all means, do yourself a favor if you truly want to get through this, this PTHD process and get it done. Do yourself a favor. Get the detox done. Because after you get it done, you're going to see food a whole lot differently. And it will begin to open your mind to other concepts of thinking. Okay? Now, after you've done that. After you've done that. You need to do a critical assessment of who you are. You need to have a conversation with you. You need to take note of first and foremost who you are. Because the goal here is that PTHD, suffering from PTHD hinders you from reaching your fullest potential of your whole purpose of why you were born on this planet. Because it keeps you in a reactionary mode. But once you come out of that and the fog begins to clear, pieces of you start showing up. But how do you process that? 
you process that by getting ahead of the curve. And you start paying attention to who you are. What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What makes you upset now? Now that you're healing from the PTSD, you shouldn't be so reactionary. You need to figure out and find out what makes you happy. So that's a part of the healing. What makes you laugh? What makes you feel peaceful and loving? Find that space. Don't look for the negative part. Look for the positive. We're going to only build on the positive that you, we all have. That a kind of PTAG covers up. Alright? So let's do that. Find out who you are. Now, on the flip side of that same coin as number five, I want you to do this too. I want you to talk to the people who love you the most, like your parents, if you're married, a spouse, if you have children that are old enough, ask them. If you have a really close friend that you've been knowing for a long time that really knows you, ask them. But find out what is their experiences of you on the happy side. We only going to deal with happy first. Because you need something to build from. And you can't build from a negative space. We need to build up on the happy. Because let's face it, PTSD in the hood is a sad case. It's always bad news. It's always, it's just not a lot of good things that happen in a PTSD space. So we got to replace those negative traits that have been feeding your PTAD with positive ones. And we need to reprogram your mind to feel good about yourself. So please, do me a favor. Ask the people who are closest to you. This is after you've done your own assessment. Now, after you've done that assessment, then you ask the people who are around you. Then you compare apples to apples and see exactly how many of the characteristics that they experience and how many that you have identified with parallel and begin to focus on cultivating those more often. We'll work on the ones that don't parallel, but I need you to program your mind with the ones who do and go at those every day. And I guarantee you, the more you go at those, the more you address those, the more you will want to automatically fall back from that environment that you came from because it's not going to align with what you're doing. Okay? These are my top five things that have helped me to move through my PTAD, and I want to help you to do that. The hood is an awesome place at at times, but it has some things that... All this trauma in people's lives as they grow older, as they become a husband or a wife or a mother or a father or a business person or anything else in the community, it really affects that how they think, how we think, how we move, how we address other people and how we just live our lives, how we do the right things or the wrong things. It affects us in a way. But this is how I discovered, this was my discovery of me curing myself from PTAC, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. PTAC is a real thing. It's not nothing to be ashamed of, but at the same time, you got to be aware of it. you got to be aware of it. If you're not aware of it, it's going to affect you. I don't want to see that happen. Not on my watch. Okay? So, thank you for listening. I am Baba Mazen Jew Alive, Ori and Me, Power of Ori. Please, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to Baba Mazen Jew Alive. I am at the power of Ori, not the power, but power of Ori, just powerofori.com, powerofori.com, you can reach me there, um, and see what we got going, take some classes, get a membership, get a free coaching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you one free session, if you want to get rid of your PTAC, I'm here to offer you one free session on the house, I want to help you out, alright, and if it works from there, let's make a plan. But well, let's have our first session, okay? All right? The first session is on Bible Marketing You Allow. You have my word. All you got to do is go to the website, become a member. We'll reach out to you and schedule a time to meet with you and go from there. All right? I want to see you make your relationships better, your finances better, get your health better, your relationship with your children better, and have more victories in life than you have losses. 
The only way we can do that, if we come from those areas across the hood, we got to get rid of that PTSD. And I'm here to help you. All right? Bob and I can do a lot. Or we coach. I appreciate you for listening. Hope to hear from you soon. And hope to see you on the mat soon. I say, have a blessed day, everyone.